Hey guys, my name is Sharon, aka Sweet Nightingale, and I'm here to introduce a new series that I'm going to be doing on my channel. Now, those of you that have been watching my channel know that I love fountain pens, love journals, love anything to do with reading and writing, and I just wanted to share my love of fountain pens with you guys. Um, there are several people that do fountain pen related videos on YouTube. The two that come to mind are Matt Armstrong from The Pen Habit and SBRE Brown, who do pen reviews and unboxings and all that good stuff. Writing samples, all that good stuff. I think there is a female uh, on here that does a, you know, a lady um, that does reviews also. I think her name is Aziza. I've never watched her, but I've heard her mentioned. But anyway, you don't really get too much of a female perspective when it comes to pen videos or pen reviews or anything like that. Oh, you also get Brian Goulet um, of the Goulet, Goulet ugh, of the Goulet Pen Company. Uh, he also does reviews and quick looks at the pens and stuff that he carries. And he also has a nice Fountain Pen 101 series that he does. But a lot of the folks that do these pen things are, uh, they cover mostly modern pens. Now I have a good selection of both vintage and modern. And I want to cover both areas with you guys, which I think um, could be some valuable information. Now, I, my goal here is to give you guys uh, some looks and things of the pens that I do have, as well as making this sort of educational and fun. So that some of you that are new to fountain pens need some more information, and those of you that are getting into fountain pens may find this helpful, and I really hope so. I want to try to explain this in a straightforward manner. Uh, but also in a friendly way so it's not too dry and, and so forth. I just want this to be very friendly, uh, maybe a little chatty without running on too much, I guess. But we'll see what happens. Sometimes sometimes I like to talk. <laughs> All right. So I want to tell you guys in this video just a brief history of how the fountain pen came into being, what is the fountain pen, um, and how I got into fountain pens. Now, I've been a, um, a collector and an enthusiast for a couple of years, and it seems like I learn something new every day about pens. I am by no means an expert, but um, I just want to share with you guys just some things that I have learned over my time of collecting them and using them and, and things like that. So what is a fountain pen? A fountain pen is a nib pen that holds liquid ink in a self-contained reservoir. Now, through capillary action and through gravity, the ink is drawn from the reservoir through the feed to the nib and deposits on the paper as you write. Writing came into being centuries and centuries and centuries, centuries ago. You know, we've probably heard of the hieroglyphics and the chiseled writing on the stone tablets and the papyrus and all that. I'm not really going to get into that because there's a whole, you know, that's a whole, another ball of wax. But um, it just, it all leads up to how fountain pens came into being and how they evolved and all that. Now there's a cute little video that I found that if you want to get more into the history of fountain pens and how writing came into being, um, it's a it's a 21 minute video and I really think it's worth watching. It is a black and white video so it was done quite a long time ago but it, it really explains things in just a concise nice manner and it has a little bit of humor in it too so I would really recommend watching it and I will put that link in the description of this video. As writing evolved, we got the quill. <laughs> now a quill is um, basically a bird feather with a sharp end on it. They weren't too reliable. I mean, they got the job done, but they broke, um, the ends would dull, and, and then you'd have to find another feather to use. And I think the inks were, I'd imagine they were pretty thick because it had to stick to the quill. But you know, back in that day, not everybody could read or write. So it wasn't something that was used every day. And it was tedious, tedious work. Well, in the early 1800s, a steel dip pen was developed. Basically, a dip pen is a steel nib point, whatever, that is hooked onto a stick somehow. And this made writing a little bit easier, but it still wasn't the greatest because the ink that was used was very corrosive. And again, the tips would dull and would break, and then you'd have to try to find a, a new tip. Well, then they started doing gold tips, and they had the elaborate holders and things like that. And I imagine that got to be pretty expensive. So it was kind of a luxury item, and you had to be affluent to get something like that. Even with the invention of the steel dip pen, writing still wasn't that easy. So people wanted a better way. They wanted to try to find a pen that would hold ink in itself so you wouldn't have to keep dipping and 
it would just have a, a better flow and just make it a lot easier to write. Now in the 1900s and even going back to the 1800s, I think is when the, I guess what we would think of as a, a fountain pen came into being, but really in the 1900s was when the fountain pen era really came into popularity. Now, some of the brands in the U.S. were Parker and Schaefer. Um, there was also Conklin. Uh, you had, I believe there was also Conway Stewart. You had Wall, W-A-H-L, not W-A-L-L. -L. <laughs> um, Wall then became Wall Eversharp. Uh, in Europe, there was also brands like Pelican, who I think started in 1938. There were quite a few different pen companies. Now, when school children were learning to write, a lot of times they were given a fountain pen to learn with. And a lot of times in the United States, it was an Estabrook. And this is these are a couple examples of what an Estabrook looks like. They came in a few different sizes. Uh, there was an LJ, which was a long one. Uh, a J, which was a little bit shorter. And then there was the SJ, which is this size. Now, how popular are fountain pens? Well, back then in the 30s and 40s and even in the 50s for a while, you had your trusty pen and that's what you used to write with. You would have a bottle of ink, um, probably on your desk at work, uh, one at home in your desk. And the standard colors were, you know, would be like blue and black. Um, I think red came along a little bit later and then there was green and purple and, and so forth. But nowadays, oh my gosh, you can get 50 shades, well, 250 shades of blue, maybe more, uh, say a hundred shades of red, you got brown ink, you got maybe 50 shades of black. I mean, yeah, ink really, really has, um, become a science, I guess, in itself. You have much, much more varieties of ink nowadays than, than you did back then. But the ironic thing was, as the 50s wore on and ballpoints became popular, uh, fountain pens kind of went by the wayside because ballpoints were a little bit convenient. Well, they were more convenient because you did not have to fill from a bottle of ink and the pen wrote longer. It took, a, it took longer for the pen to run out and... A lot of times you could just throw out the pen and, and just get a, a new ballpoint. Or um, if you had a non-disposable ball, ballpoint, you would just exchange the little, you would just exchange the empty ink holder for another little ink holder. And now in modern times, uh, fountain pens are considered a luxury or a collector's item or, you know, just something that's really not used in, in everyday writing. But there are still fountain pen enthusiasts, as we can tell by the number of pen shows and people that still buy pens. But it's kind of a niche thing. Not everybody knows what they are. Not everybody is interested in using them. But those people that are enthusiastic about them love them. Me included. How I got into fountain pens? Well, it's kind of interesting, really. I really have not been a collector or an enthusiast for very long, maybe just a couple of years. But how I got into them was, well, I sort of knew what they were. Um, I love old time radio and, of course, old shows and movies and stuff like The Twilight Zone. And back then, I mean, that's what people used to write with, as I was saying. So you heard about fountain pens or you would see them in the movie or on the show and whatnot. And I also, when I was little, I also saw an elderly gentleman writing with one. And I thought it was pretty neat because... I had never seen um, a pen like it before, and so I just, I kind of stored that in the back of my mind, along with all the other references to fountain pens that I heard of from old movies and TV shows and old-time radio shows and things like that. And then when I started getting into journal writing, seriously, I had, well, that's, that's another subject, journal writing, but I had started keeping a journal when I was a teenager and just kind of got out of it and so forth. But when I got serious about writing a journal again, um, I'd seen that a lot of people were using fountain pens and I thought, wow, you can still get fountain pens really. So I went scouring on Amazon. <laughs> and of course that was where I found a bunch of the modern ones. Like I never even thought to look for an old one because well, I really didn't think that many of them were around anymore. <laughs> now, my husband had a couple of old ones that he had shown me, but 
I mean, he'd had hit them for a long, long, long time. But, you know, to actually get an old one, you know, I thought that would be a pretty expensive prospect. So I went scouring on Amazon and actually the first two fountain pens that I bought was a Lamy Safari and a Parker IM. I actually did not start out with a Pilot Metropolitan, but I did start out with a Lamy Safari and a Parker IM. And I really enjoyed it. Like I, at first I believe I used the cartridge because I did not think to buy a bottle of ink at the time. Although I think, well, there was another pen that I bought really close to the time that I bought the IM and the, the Parker IM and the Lamy Safari. And that was a Parker Urban, which actually came in a little kit. It had the cartridges and it had the converter and it also had a bottle of black um, quink ink, and which I subsequently gave to my husband. But um, anyway, as I said, I popped the cartridges in and I really loved how it wrote. I mean, it was the really smoothest writing experience I'd ever had. And I thought, you know, this is pretty cool. I can use this for my journal. And I loved it. I really did. I loved it. And then as time went on, I found more pens that I liked. <laughs> I found more pens that I liked. And then my husband kind of got me, well, I actually, I actually got my husband into um, fountain pen collecting. As I said, he had a couple of old ones that he'd gotten when he was younger and so on and, and had just kept. So when I got him into fountain pen collecting, he started looking for the vintage things because, well, both of us like, um, both of us like old vintage things. So then we both started collecting um, vintage fountain pens and then I ended up getting a pretty good selection of both modern and vintage, which is pretty cool. <laughs> he has mostly vintage with a few modern ones mixed in. And that is pretty much how I get into fountain pens. The rest is history. Once I started collecting them and buying them and getting them, uh, the world has never been the same since. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are looking forward to this new series that I'm going to be doing. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to see more like this and to watch this new series unfold. We'll talk to you guys later in the next video. Okay, bye guys.